Today, I want us to begin by looking at the solar generation resource. Yeah. I would want us to begin by looking at the solar generation resource. We are going to trace the solar energy all the way from the source, that is the sun. We try to quantify that and then try to see what happens to the energy from the sun from the moment um, it emanates or originates from the sun uh, to that point in time that it is received by the solar panel. And then now we take it all the way up to what is converted to electrical energy by the solar PV modules. We are also going to have a look at some of the resources and uh, software tools that uh, we usually use to determine how much solar the radiation we have and um, the potential, the potential of a given site or location to generate uh, the required amount of uh, solar power. So we are going to interact with the, uh, we're going to interact with the um, various concepts pertaining to the solar energy. And uh, we are going to begin by looking at the sun, what we can get from the sun, the different forms that we can convert the energy we get from the sun into, the distinction between the solar photovoltaics and the solar thermal, the systems, the various terminologies that are applicable with respect to the solar PV resource, the different components of the solar irradiation, optimal positioning of solar PV modules with respect to the position of the sun in the sky, and then the various sources of solar irradiation data, which are usually useful in determining how much potential in solar power a given site or location can provide. And of course, um, we will, um, be interested also in um, uh, trying to download or see how we can download the data uh, from some of those uh, sources. Um, majority of the sources I'm going to expose ourselves to here uh, entail um, free data. So the data would be available for downloading for free from a majority of um, those sites. All right, yes, so um, I think uh, there was a bit of um, noise coming from um, some of us in the background. So I, I, I have muted everybody. Um, maybe in case um, you would want to communicate with me for the time being, you can use the chat area there. But I think later on, I think I would again give back the unmuting rights. Now, if you look at what we have here, we begin with the energy that we get from the sun. And the sun is considered to be the parent source of energy, whereby it has got the potential of generating 3.8 times 10 raised to power 23 kilowatts of power. But um, 
not all that power gets to the surface of the earth. Mm, out of that, what reaches the surface of the earth is 1.73 times 10 raised to power 16 kilowatts. So you realize that the energy that we get from the sun can then be converted into other forms. For example, we can have um, the energy we obtain from the plant matter, those we get from fossil fuels, hydroelectricity, wind, the hydrological cycle, and the food, all those ones, we can trace them to originate from the sun. And if you look at this particular diagram here, you see, for example, the energy that we get from the sun in form of light, it can be fed into the photovoltaic modules or solar PV modules, and out of that we get electrical energy. The same energy we get from the sun in the form of the heat, it can be tapped using solar thermal concentrators, and then of course converted into, into um, electricity by the uh, solar thermal um, converters, or it can still be converted into or collected into a much stronger form of heat energy that can be used to heat water, or maybe dry, maybe uh, cereals, and so on and so forth. The energy we get from the sun in form of biomass, okay, we can get the energy from the sun converted to be in form of biomass. And of course, that is the same category that we also have the the plant matter, the food crops, and so on and so forth. Now, out of biomass energy, we can, of course, also get um, the fossil fuels when, of course, it is uh, subjected to heat and given time to convert into fossil fuels. At the same time, from biomass energy, we can get the biofuels. From the sun also, it has got an influence on the weather events. For instance, we have precipitation wind, wave, tidal, and running water, all those are other forms of energy from the sun which are contributed to by the weather events. So we can convert solar energy into other forms of energy. For instance, we can convert solar energy into chemical energy as happens with green plants, which convert uh, solar energy into chemical energy using photosynthesis. And that is how we are able to get, for example, sugar and cellulose. We also have solar energy being converted into heat energy. And that is the same thing that is carried out by the solar heating devices. Uh, for example, we can use that heat to dry cereals, maybe dry some other stuff in water heating and some other applications. If you have the CSP plants, that is a concentrated solar power plants, those ones specifically would be used to convert our water into steam. And of course, that steam can then be used, for example, to run a steam turbine, or it can be used maybe for some other applications. Like you can also use that steam to maybe um, um, to maybe participate in some production processes like in milk processing plants and uh, tea processing plants. We also have solar energy converted to electrical energy. And this is where we will be focusing more on, where we are converting solar energy into electrical energy by using the solar photovoltaic modules. In this particular case, we would be um, using the solar radiation or the light energy and then we use the solar photovoltaic cells to convert it into electrical energy so if you look at this curve that we have here it is showing the distribution of uh, solar radiation across various across various um, wavelengths across various wavelengths and um, we can see the spectral irradiance in watts per square meter. Um, I think uh, there's a small technical hitch there. I have seen on the wall 
um, a screenshot where one of us is saying that um, one of us is saying that he's only seeing the profiles for members. I'm not sure if that is what you're also seeing from your end. I have seen I have seen on the wall, one of us is saying that uh, he's only seeing the profile. I'm not sure whether it was sorted out from his end. Is okay, 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 good. Okay, so I hope we we have my screen and you also have my audio. Okay. Uh, someone who's saying I can't hear anything. Okay. Someone is saying I can't hear anything. I don't know, maybe. Audio is not stable. I don't know why that is the case because uh, I am using cabled internet, which I had expected to be strong. It is uh, a cabled internet for an institution. I don't know why the audio maybe is not. Okay, so Cecilia is saying, Personally, I have your screen and audio. Peter Ucheng is saying it's now okay. Evans is saying okay now. Okay, fine. Those are good confirmations. So we can continue. So now if you look at this particular curve here, we can see this is the spectral irradiance in watt per square meter per nanometers. Nanometer is the unit we use to measure wavelength down here. And as you can see, the solar we get um we get uh, the maximum solar irradiation within the visible part of electromagnetic spectrum or the solar radiation spectrum for for this case you see here around this point here okay we consider this to be the sunlight at the top of the atmosphere and this is where we get the maximum solar radiation okay Within the ultraviolet region, of course, this is the potential of the solar radiance that we can obtain from there. And then when we get or we join the infrared region, the solar radiation or the solar irradiance decreases with increasing wavelength, okay? And by the time we get to 2,500 nanometers of wavelength, it has dropped to almost uh, zero. And so, you will find that um, for us to be able to obtain um, maximum okay, amount of energy from the, the sun, then we would be focusing within the visible part of the solar radiation spectrum. And that is why we usually talk of sunlight, okay? Or the light energy from the sun. So we're focusing more on the visible uh, spectrum. We are focusing more on the visible spectrum. Please remember that uh, there is a difference between spectral irradiance and spectral uh, radiation or radiance. When we talk of irradiance, it means it is watts per square meter. But when you talk about radiance, we remove the aspect of the area, okay? So usually when you just talk about solar radiation, we are removing the aspect of the area. So we just quantify solar radiation in watts or kilowatts. But when you bring in the aspect of area, the surface area over which that solar radiation is projected to or onto, you now drop the word uh, solar radiation and replace it with now solar irradiance. So irradiance incorporates area alongside power, but radiance or radiation is only power minus the area over which that power is spread or projected to. Now, if you look at um, 
irradiance here, it would be the solar radiation incident on a given surface area at any given point in time, quantified in watts per square meter. And then the irradiation would be the total amount, also referred to as the quantity of solar energy obtained over a given unit area over a period of time. So this one would be watt hours per square meter. If you want an alternative term for the irradiation, you can also talk of insulation. There's another term that is very much useful when it comes to the design of solar PV systems. We would want to know, uh, we would want to know um, um, the time period within a day or within the day during which we can obtain reasonable amount of um, solar irradiance. We call it the peak sun hours. And um, some people can consider peak sun hours maybe to be between uh, 10 a.m. in the morning and 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Some people can consider it to be maybe between 9 a.m. in the morning and 4 p.m. in the evening. But I don't want us to be over ambitious when it comes to the peak sun hours. Uh, for my case, I usually prefer using five hours, okay? So I'm talking about um, five hours, that one I'm, I'm sure that will be having very strong sunshine. So please let us take note of the fact that um, when we talk about the peak sun hours, it will also affect the number of autonomy phase, or it will also affect maybe the potential of the solar generating site, because if you, for example, set peak sun hours at eight hours, and yet on the ground, what is effective is five hours, your design would be very ambitious, but what you are able to obtain from the ground would be less. So if you set maybe peak sun hours to be five hours, that one would be realistic. Talking about 11 a.m. and um, 3 p.m. And so that one would be would be a little bit realistic. That's maybe between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So we do 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, five hours. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular diagram, it has picked, for example, um, if you see, for example, from 10 a.m. all the way to 2 p.m., that is the ideal peak sun hour period, okay? So you go for that rectangle. But you see the variation of uh, solar irradiance with respect to time of the day is a smooth curve, okay? It is this curve here, okay? It is that curve there. Let's look at the curve, look at the curve. Look at the curve. Let's look at the curve. And then maybe around midday here, that's when we have now the maximum power obtainable from the, the, the solar resource. And that one would be um, one kilowatt per square meter or 1,000 watt per square per square meter, 1,000 watt per square meter. So I want us to take one minute and have a look at this curve before I say two things about it and then we move to the next thing. All right, so... The two things I wanted to mention about this diagram that is projected on our screens, the first one is the orientation of the solar panel with respect to the position of the sun in the sky and, and the time of the day would determine how much power we get from the modules. That is the first point I want us to take note of. Okay, fine. It is true, we have said we have peak sun hours. Fine, well and good. Maybe five hours, or to be ambitious, maybe six or seven hours. 
But now here we come with, again, another aspect that the orientation of the PV module with respect to the position of the sun in the sky would also determine how much power we get from the PV module. And the last thing I mentioned about this is that we might have what we call um, shading. Shading is where maybe um, portions of the solar PV module are abstracted from the sun, okay? Maybe you can have a tall building, okay? Maybe maybe some branches, maybe maybe tree, tree branches, okay? Maybe cloud cover and so on and so forth. So it could be partial shading, okay? Or full shading and so on and so forth. Meaning you might be within 11 a.m., and uh, 3 p.m., where we expect to get the maximum solar ir irradiation. But then again, within that window of time, you have shading coming into the picture. So again, you will not be able to get or obtain as much power as you would have wished from the solar PV modules. Okay, this is the formula that we use to determine the module energy output. And I want us to take note of it. The module energy output in watt hours is obtained by multiplying the PV peak power rating with the peak sun hours with the performance ratio. The performance ratio is a factor that is arrived at after taking into account three to four items. And I will expound more, I will expound more on the performance ratio of the solar PV modules in future. For now, let us use the factor and it can be between 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. That performance ratio is sometimes called by engineers the derating factor. Instead of considering that we have full power from the solar PV module, we reduce it to 60 or 70% or in between there. So this performance ratio is considered to be like a derating factor. Let us take a look at the first example. Five 250 watt peak PV modules are installed in a location that has got five peak sun hours. Assuming a performance ratio of 0 0.65, determine the module energy output. So the number of PV modules, number of modules, in this case, is five modules. Now, the rated capacity, okay, rated power output, that is peak power output, the maximum possible power we can get from one PV module is quoted as 250 watts peak. And we have five modules. So to determine the module energy output, you begin by multiplying the total number of modules with the energy, maximum energy we can get from one module, that is now five times 250. Then we need to convert that to watt hours, so you multiply by five hours, which happens to be the peak sun hours even. For a good design, it is preferable that you use five. If you use seven, you will be over ambitious. That is of a design system. It would be working well on paper, but poorly on the ground. And the performance ratio or the rating factor, in this case, we've been given 0 0.65. Meaning out of the original power we would have worked with when we multiply five by 250 by five, we reduce it by 35% to now 
That is now why we're using 0 0.65. So when you work out that, we get 4,063 watt hours per day. We get 4,063 watt hours per day. And when you divide that one by 1,000, you can now get 4.063 kilowatt hours per day kilowatt hours per day now um i would want us to quickly try let's change now this one to 330 watt peak module and we still retain five modules so give me the mod the 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 the, the, the the total energy output when we have five 330 watt peak modules installed still in a location that has got five peak sun hours and assuming a performance ratio of 0 0.65. Let me check on the chat area there. I acknowledge a few answers from the chat area there. Now remember, we have five 330 watts peak modules They're installed in a location that supports uh, five peak sun hours. And we've been told to use a performance ratio. We've been told to use a performance ratio of 0 0.65. Can we determine the total energy output? Let us determine the total energy output. Let me check the chat area there. Stephen Kamau has obtained 5.025 kilowatt hours per day. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, he has logged in with the uh, staff number. 5362.5 watt hours per day. Fanwell has gotten 5.365 kilowatt hours per day. Same as John Mwiri. No, John Mwiri has gotten 5.362 kilowatt hours per day. Kefa has gotten 5.36 kilowatt, kilowatt per hour. Okay. Uh, Kefa, you can check on uh, the units there. And a little bit of rounding off there. Geoffrey Mutuku has obtained 50, okay, 5,362.5 uh, watt hours per day. Uh -huh. um, Elijah Kibet, I'm missing units, but I can see the number. Edward Wakagwa, 5.4 kilowatt hours. Okay, Edward, a bit of rounding off there. Okay. Uh -huh. Not so good to round off too early. Frederick Njoguna, 5.36 kilowatt per hour. Okay, Frederick Njoguna, check how you've quoted the units. John Key here, 5.362 kilowatt hours per day. Kefa, you've corrected your value. Thank you. Evans Mose, 5.362 kilowatt. Okay, Evans Mose, there's a value, I'm, there's a unit I'm missing there on your answer. Infinix, I'm not sure about the name. Mm -hmm. Abanas, 5.3625 kilowatt hours per day. Okay, good, good. Moses Odiambo, okay, Stephen Kamau, okay. Moses Odiambo, okay. Uh, D then, okay, you've rounded off quite early. Okay, per day is missing there. Cecilia Wausi, 5.3625 kilowatt hours per day. Elijah Kibet is now okay. Doha, okay. Frederick Njoguna is now okay. Though a little bit of uh, rounding off there. So thank you members. I think um, we are on the same page and I am pleased with the, the answers I have obtained on the chat area there. So in this particular case, when you have five 330 watt peak modules, just multiply five by 330, five five again by 0 0.65. The majority of us have gotten the answers for it. And make sure now you can put watt hours per day and you're also allowed to convert to 
kilowatt hours per day. Now, there are various components of solar radiation, and that is what is illustrated in the diagram here. I am not going to spend much time on this. There is the direct radiation, which is uh, the kind of energy we can obtain from the sun during a clear sky, sunny day, okay? There is the diffuse radiation, which is the scattered, scattered radiation uh, that has got uh, some influence coming from uh, maybe water vapor, dust particles, and some other trace elements that might be present in the atmosphere. We have the albedo being the amount of light that is reflected from the surroundings of a PV system. For example, the solar radiation can hit maybe some rooftop vegetation or water body, okay, or some other objects within the vicinity of the solar PV module and then it is reflected to, to and directed to the solar PV module. We have the global radiation, which is the sum of all the above three components. So when you sum up direct radiation to diffuse radiation to albedo, you get the global radiation. We have the DNI, which is the direct normal irradiance. We consider that one to be the one coming from the direct beam of light or radiation from the sun. And then the last one is the global horizontal irradiance, which is the total solar radiation incident on the horizontal surface. How do we get it? You add the DNI to the diffuse horizontal irradiance to the ground reflected radiation. So let's say, for example, that this is a solar PV module mounted on the rooftop. Then um, the direct irradiance would be the component of sunlight emanating directly from the sun and striking the solar PV module. Now we have, like now, this could be clouds or some other objects. When the sunlight hits maybe, maybe some water vapor or maybe cloud or dust particles or some other elements within the atmosphere and then is deflected to the solar PV module, that would be the diffuse irradiance. But you see, you can also have diffusion heading away from where the solar PV module is. And then of course, we can also have what is hitting the ground, okay? Or maybe vegetation or snow and so on and so forth. And then it is reflected, okay? Or redirected upwards and it might find its way now again, um, um, striking the surface of the solar PV module. Over 85% of the solar radiation, we target the direct irradiance. And that is why it is important that you check the alignment of the solar PV module with respect to the sun. There are instruments that we use to measure solar irradiance. We can use a pyra. Num a pyranometer. We can use a pyranometer uh, to measure the solar irradiance. There are also radiation sensors which can be mounted on the solar PV modules and then they can be used to monitor the amount of solar irradiance. We also have pyrano heliometer which is used to measure the direct beam solar radiation the direct beam solar radiation. And that one is usually important when we are dealing with CSPs, the concentrating solar systems or the concentrating solar photovoltaic systems, the CSPs. Okay. So these are pictures of some of those gadgets or devices that we use to measure the solar irradiance. Okay. Now, these are some of the aspects of the atmosphere that can affect the amount of solar irradiation we receive. This is a cloudy sky. 
So we'll be talking mainly of diffuse radiation because there are clouds everywhere. So when the sky is cloudy, we'll be focusing on diffuse radiation. On clear sky, we'll be going for direct irradiation. Like now you see here, when we have a clear sky, mainly we will be going for the direct radiation, but we can also have a mixture of clouds and partly cloudy, partly clear sky in between there. So it is when we have this clear sky that we expect to obtain the maximum irradiation, which is quoted as 1000 watts per square meter at standard test conditions. Clear sky, room temperature, or a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, we have solar constant and the standard test condition. Okay. The solar constant is quoted as 1,360 watts per square meter, and is the amount of the incoming. Uh, uh is the amount of uh, power we get from um, incoming solar radiation when it it, it is considered to hit the upper atmosphere but you see we usually bring that one to standard test conditions so that we deal with the light intensity at the standard test condition and if we deal with the light intensity at the standard test condition where we consider a clear sky and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, we will have that value to be 1000 watt per square meter. And in this particular case, of course, we consider a ground mounted solar PV system. We consider the solar PV module to be at the ground level. Okay, meaning it is at sea level. Okay. So if you look at the diagram that is here, let us just take note of the fact that um, the positioning and the orientation of the solar PV module with respect to the position of the sun in the sky, what we call the sun angles, would then determine how much power we get from the solar PV module, even as time goes by. So on one hand, we have the peak sun hours, which is the time duration over which we expect to obtain reasonable amount of energy from the sun. But on the other hand, again, we also have the angle that the module is making with respect to the position of the sun. So if maybe the site is around the equator, we would be having the solar PV modules, maybe facing vertically upwards in many cases. Now, if you are on the Eastern Hemisphere, we would find the solar PV modules, um, um, uh, maybe deflected towards the East, okay? And so on and so forth. There's of course the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere. Um, there are people who are on the, the West side, there are people who are on the East side. We know that the sun rises from the East, and um, uh, sets towards the west. And so in many cases, you would find that uh, the solar PV modules would be inclined a little bit towards the direction that the sun would be stronger as the day goes by, other than inclining the solar PV modules towards the direction where the sun would be rising from. Because of course, we expect the solar radiation to peak around 12 noon or midday okay now there are two important angles that uh, we need to take note of the angle between the local vertical and the line that connects the observer with the sun is what we call the zenith angle okay you can see the zenith angle and then the angle with respect to the horizontal is what we call the azimuth the angle with respect to the horizontal is what we call the azimuth, okay? Differentiate between tilt or inclination and orientation angles. What are the optimum angles for PV installations? Let me get a few responses to those questions. 
there are some solar PV modules or systems which have got um, trackers, so that maybe the solar PV modules would be noted to be uh, tracking the position of the, the sun for maximum solar irradiation. So you will find that maybe those solar PV modules are motorized or are fixed with motors and they're able to, 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 to tilt or rotate and get inclined as is required. Now I'm asking about the difference between tilt or inclination and the orientation angles, and then what is the optimum angles for PV installations? Let me check the chat area there for a few responses. Let me check the chat area there for a few responses. Remember, there is um, the minimum angle that the solar PV module should make with the horizontal. So that we are able to optimally tap the solar irradiation from the sun. And then there is the difference between tilt, also called inclination, and the orientation angles. The orientation angle would be a global phenomenon where you begin by, for example, which side of the roof should you put the solar PV modules? Should they face to the east, to the west, to the north, or to the south? So that would give you the orientation. But the angle that the solar PV module makes with the horizontal would then be the tilt or the inclination. So let me check the responses there. Finally, is saying minimum angle is between 45, is between 30, 30 degrees and 45 degrees, correct? Let me get maybe three or so responses before we continue. Let me get three or four responses before we continue. Let me check the chat area there. Okay, so I will check the chat area in due course again. So let us take note of the fact that, uh, as I have already explained, the general direction that or side of the mounting site that the solar PV modules would be facing would give us the orientation. Like uh, they generally are facing the, 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 the north, south, east, west, and so on and so forth. And then the angle that the solar PV module makes with respect to with respect to the horizontal would then now constitute what we call the inclination or the tilt angle. And I've also noted uh, Moses and Geoffrey, in addition to what uh, Fanuel had given us, have quoted 30 to 45 degrees. And that is absolutely correct. Finally, for today, I want us to have a brief tour about some of the softwares and platforms that we can use to access solar irradiation data. There are some softwares that uh, you download and install. Like number six is a software that you download and install. It's called Meteorlome. Okay. Number seven are also simulation softwares which you download and install, like HOMA. HOMA is not free. Okay. PV system, PV song, helioscope, sunny web design, and the rest, those ones you download and, and install. Though the sunny web design also has like an online version, but there are many softwares which we download and install. There are some that we access through um, the website. 
and they are the ones which are given using the HTTP links. Okay. Okay. Cecilia, I've noted also your response on the chat area there. Thank you. So I will demonstrate maybe for a few sites, depending on the time that is available. Maybe I would um, allow class to be picking the ones from number one. From number one to number five, you can pick maybe the ones you want me to demonstrate. Let me give that maybe the unmuting rights, just in case there is order in the meeting. You can select for me the, maybe which ones you want me to go through. Obadia Kimani is saying, I go through number three, okay. So, okay, so Badia has suggested number three, Kip Kuri number two, John Kia number three and four, Edward number five, okay. Stephen Kamau, okay. Uh, Stephen Kamau three and four, Brenda two, Pius two, just uh, five, okay. So I can see Brenda, Pius, um, keep Kiroi Evans are all for number two. So let me start with the number two. Then I, I, I will consider now the rest, okay? So I will copy the link for number two. So let me exit uh, the presentation mode. This is Solar GIS, that is Solar. Um, uh, Geographical Information System, GIS. So I can copy that. Allow me to share my screen. Then I paste the link there. I paste the link there and give it time to load. Once it loads, we are on the website solargis.com. Our mission here is to try and determine the potential of a given location to generate solar power. You know, the design and implementation of solar PV systems is not just about buying PV modules and mounting them somewhere and then you start generating power. You might even find yourself in a situation whereby the space available may be within the rooftop or whichever site you want to mount the PV modules is not sufficient to generate power that can run the loads the customer has. That is why it is not advisable for the designer of uh, a solar PV system to assume that they don't know how they can verify the potential of a particular location. No, please start by determining the potential of a particular location. If a particular location can give you much more power with few modules, the better. But if the location is such that you require a reasonable number of PV modules for you to get maybe a reasonable amount of power, let the customer pay more on the PV modules. But it doesn't make sense to propose four, six PV modules for a, a customer, yet the site is so rich in solar uh, irradiation or solar power that maybe just one or two modules would have been enough or sufficient. So here, when you want to use this, you scroll, if you scroll down here, just scroll down here, okay? There is a place they are saying, um, okay, so let's, let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. Press, let us scroll down. Okay. Now, if you come down here, there is a place here where you have, um, let's still go down. Let's go down. Okay. 
there's a place here where they say European Union, that is European Regional Development Fund, okay? So this website, we get the data here for free, and this one is funded or supported by the European Union, okay? There would be another one that would be supported by the US government through the Department of Energy, and I will mention that when we, we get there, okay? So now, if you are new to the place, you can, of course, click uh, Get Started, and you would be taken on a step-by-step -step, um, manner or procedure on how to use this uh, site. But for my case, because it's not my first time to interact with the site, I will go to Resources, and then I click on uh, Resources there. So if you are here at the homepage, there's a Products, Customers, Pricing, Documentation, and Resources. So just click Resources. Now, under Resources, you go to Free Maps and GIS Data. That's the only area we are interested in in this particular case. So you click Free Maps and GIS Data and give it time to load. So now here, you are told solar resource maps and GIS data for over 200 countries, okay? So if you want to download something, you come to download here. So you click download there. So in this case, we want to download data. Then you select the country here. For our case, it is Kenya. So you come and type Kenya there. Once you select the country, it will narrow down now to solar resource maps of Kenya. And like here now, you can see the photovoltaic power potential for the entire country, Kenya. Okay. So if you now, if you look at now this one here, for example, you can see down here, you have the daily totals. Down here, you have the daily totals. And then here you have the yearly totals. Like now here, you have uh, 5.2 kilowatt hours, okay? 5.2 kilowatt hours on the basis of kilowatt peak or worked out using the kilowatt peak quantity, okay? And um, you can see there are some parts of the country with very huge solar potential, you can see them. These are the regions going to 5.2 kilowatt hours peak, okay? The yellow ones are here between 4.4 and 4.6, okay? Okay, like now those parts of Wajia, Garissa, okay? And the coastal part of the country. But now look at um, regions like Kisumu, Eldoret, Lodwa, Marsabit, okay? Some parts around Nakuru, some parts near Meru, Okay, look at those regions. That one we have maximum potential. So that is for the whole country. Remember that um, this is also supported by the World Bank Group. Okay, and the World Bank Group. So if you want a specific region within the country, just click here, region. No, sorry. If you want a specific, um, if let's say you want a different region with respect to continents, you can come here. So you can go to a different continent. Maybe if you want map for Africa, you can go to Africa there. Now you will get the photovoltaic power production potential for the entire continent or Africa. And you can download as a portable network graphic file, that is PNG file, okay? Or you can download as a TIF file, okay? So you can download for free. You can download for free. This is global horizontal irradiation, the GHI, okay? And this one is direct normal E, irradiation DNI, okay? And so on and so forth, okay? So what I want to show here now is, let me go back to Kenya. And that's the last thing I'm showing on this one, then I take questions. So let me load Kenya. Then once I load Kenya, let me attempt to access a specific town in Kenya, okay? Let me attempt to access 
a specific location in in Kenya. If I attempt to access a specific location in Kenya, let me, for example, type try to type Nairobi. I am being told no results. Let me type uh, maybe Kisi. Again, I'm told no results. It is not accidental. It is not accidental. But let me type, for example, Rwanda here. Okay. Now I have the solar power potential for Rwanda. Okay. Again, if I try to narrow down to a specific place in Rwanda, like Nyanza, let's say I try to access a location in Rwanda, Nyanza, okay? Again, no results, okay? I will not give, I will not give further comments beyond that, but I would want you to watch what we are able to access from a given software and what we are not able to access because I will give my remarks once we have exposed ourselves to the various platforms. But that is the farthest we can go with the solar GIS, unless if I have questions. So members, are you able to check solar irradiation data using the solar GIS? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you very much, Stephen Kamau, for that confirmation. Okay, thank you very much, Obadia. Thank you very much, everybody. Wonderful confirmations. Thank you very much. And I hope you have also noted the limitations of this software. It is tying us to, 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 some, to something. It is tying our hands. That is what we can get. It's tying our hands. It's what we can get and what we cannot get. Okay, let me go back to the chat. I think you proposed that we also give a look at, um, we are done with the number two. You said that, uh, okay, I can see also quite a number said number three. So let's explore number three quickly. Let's, let us explore number three quickly. Um, so for number three, I can go back to my presentation. Number three is the Global Solar Atlas. So let me pick it. Then go to my browser. Paste the link there. Hit enter. Give it time to load. We can accept the cookies. Okay. Now, when you go to Global Atlas, you are still seeing Solar GIS somewhere. Are you seeing Solar GIS somewhere? You also see the supporters or the, the, the collaborators World Bank, the ES map, and so on and so forth. You may have noted from the previous one that we also had some data. It was quoting up to the year 2018. But this one now is a little bit much more current. I didn't want to comment about that before. Now, there is a tab up here where we have such locations. I can now type Kenya there. And then I, I can okay. hit enter. <sighs> Nothing happens. I can type, um, let me type uh, Nairobi there, then hit enter. Nothing happens. But I can come with a coordinate and also type it there. I can come with a coordinate and also type it there, but I will come to that later on. Okay. Now, let me go to the map and then zoom, okay? Please be very keen on how I am approaching the softwares. You check what is working and what's not working. So I come to Kenya 
and then uh, zoom to a site, for example, around Nairobi, and then click a place. When you click a place, you have the coordinates here, which of course you can also copy those coordinates. This is now a vessel on Kitongi Ward in Kajado County. The road is unnamed. If you come down here, the map data is given. The DNI, GHI, DIF, GTI, and so on and so forth given there. And you can see the values, okay? You can do it per year or you can do it per day. Those are daily values. So you can just click this drop down, you do it per day or per year, okay? Now, you can also share that. You can also come here and download the reports. If you click here, download the reports, it will ask you whether you want PDF or Excel. For majority of researchers, they will require the data to be in Excel format so that they can maybe feed them to artificial intelligence algorithms and machine learning algorithms for purposes of developing intelligent solar photovoltaic modules or systems. Now, if you now look at, like now, let's say I had copied those coordinates and then I come and paste the coordinates there, you see now it is picking the site. So in short, this tab you see up here is not a place we search with the name. It is a place we search with the coordinates. So you can go to maybe the Google map, then you obtain the coordinates from the Google map, then you come and type those coordinates there. Okay, on the southern part, you'll have negative here, southern part of the equator. On the northern part of the equator, you'll have positive there, and so on and so forth, okay? So, contrary to searching here by name, here you search by coordinates, or you just go to the map. You know this one, if you scroll it, it can give you the whole world, and you can pan around, eh? You can pan around, you can pan around, okay? So you can just zoom to the country or the site of interest, okay? And then you click that location. The coordinates will come there. You can now copy the coordinates you put up there, or alternatively, you can go directly and obtain the data, okay? Now, let me pick one more site before I take questions on this environment. Let me pick a site. Let me pick a site in Nyanza. Let me pick a site in Homa Bay there and then now look at now let's check by here this one is giving us 17 19.1 kilowatt hours okay of course calculated using the peak values and of course we can also still convert there to per day or you can convert up there to per day and there are now those other parameters that you can also check okay so now we have seen the flexibility that we get when we use the Global Solar Atlas. You can also go to the satellite mode, so you can have now the satellite pictures, okay? And you can also go the topography, topographic route, okay? And of course, you can also show maybe hydro-connected sites, sites, solar measurement sites, my sites, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, any question on the Global Solar Atlas? Any question on the Global Solar Atlas and how we use it to determine solar generation potential of a given site? Remember the information you are interested in is this one specific photovoltaic power output. This is the most important information. That is the most important information. Now, let me get feedback from class. Are we able to use the Global Solar Atlas software or platform to check on the generation potential of a given site or location?
thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank you thank you and i hope you are seeing what um what the solar gis was tying us down to which we've been freed upon by the solar by the global solar at last thank you very much if you want me to stop i can stop there but if you want me to also show another one i can still go back to the chat area and check maybe the one another one you had proposed i show let me check the chat area do you want me to show another platform and how to use it to access the generation potential information thank you very much members the response is very very amazing thank you i had seen some proposals on number three number four okay Elijah had said all if possible. Okay. It's okay. So let me demonstrate the next one briefly. So I can go to I can go to let me go to number one. I don't know why you didn't propose for me number one, and there's something interesting in number one. Let me go to number one. The PVGIS. Let me go to number one quickly. To show you how to use it. Paste the link there. This one you don't announce to the client. No, you don't announce to the client. You are checking the generation potential, but you don't announce to the client, but it will determine the costing of the project and the overall performance of the project. This one is a very, very detailed site supported by the European Commission. There's so much information it can allow you to download. So how do we use it? Okay, one way is you scroll manually and pan through the map. Like now I'm looking for Kenya. That one I'm in Asia. So let me come to Africa. Then I go to Kenya. And you can see the coordinates running around here. Are you seeing the coordinates running around there? Okay. You can see the coordinates running around there. The place marked Casa. This place marked Casa. Just check the coordinates. Okay. So like now, if you click maybe a site in Eldoret, you click a site in Eldoret. Those are the coordinates. You can note them down. Okay. So just click the site. Like now, they have. Uh, let me accept all cookies. So I've clicked, selected a site in Eldoret. You can see it there. Okay. And the selected site, the coordinates are given here. The elevation is 2160 meters above sea level. The PVGIS version 5.2, that's the one we are using. So you just come here, you can get PVGIS ERA5, SARA, and SARA2. So let me go for SARA2. You can also select the PV technology. That's what I like about this one. The other platforms were not allowing us to select the PV technology. So for example, you can go for crystalline silicon, where we have polycrystalline and monocrystalline. Then the installed peak PV power, you come and put it there. Okay, so now let me just leave that default value of one. The system losses, maybe let me leave it at 14%, but you can also put the value that you envisage as the designer. And then the type of mounting, we'll get to mounting structures in future. Maybe you can have maybe roof added or building integrated or freestanding. Let me have maybe roof added, okay? Or let me just have freestanding. Then the slope, which is the orientation, and then the azimuth, which is the tilt, okay? And then if you want to incorporate PV electricity price, you check that. Then you put the costing. PV system cost in your currency. You put the value there, interest there, and the lifetime in years there. For example, if I put 25 there, the PV system cost in my in the Kenyan shilling, maybe I put 100,000. The interest maybe I put uh, 12%. Okay. Then you come and click visualize the results. So you click. Once you put those settings here, okay, you see you also have different situations. You can have grid connected system, 
tracking PV system, off-grid system, monthly data, and you can check whether you want the GHI data, direct normal irradiation, global, global irradiation optimal angle, global irradiation at angle, and so on and so forth, and you can put those values there. If you want daily data, you come there on fixed plan and so on and so forth, UTC time, okay? If you want maybe for a particular month, you can go and set the month there and so on and so forth. You can also set local time, okay? On sun tracking plan, you can also enable those if you have maybe sun tracking systems and maybe also for the daily temperature profile if you need. The hourly data is also accessible and the TMY data is also accessible. Now you can select also the periods here, like now, 2005 to 2016, 2005 to 2020, 2000 and uh, yes, those are some of the periods given there, okay? Now you can also download the data as CSV, which is Excel, JSON, and some other forms like this one here, okay? So there are various categories of data that um, you can download. Okay, you just click now, maybe download CSV. You can go tracking PV, off-grid, monthly data, daily data, hourly data. And researchers usually find this tool very, very much useful because you might require this data, like I mentioned, for research purposes, okay? So now, Let's say maybe I go to I go to visualize the results. So if you go to visualize results, you will have now the plots created there for you. Among the softwares, this PVGIS is a very, very important software. So as you can see now, the information is given there and it will respect what you had put in the setting like the angle of incidence percentage given there, the spectral effects and so on and so forth, total loss, the PV electricity cost per kilowatt hour and so on and so forth, okay? And this one now is for one year, the PV energy output in kilowatt hours, January, February, all the way to December for the site we had selected. And then the monthly energy output from fixed angle PV, so on and so forth. So you can download here you can download this graph. You can also check PV output, you can check radiation, you can download PDF. PV output is that one. Radiation is this one. So you can see now in plane irradiation in kilowatt hours per square watt meter. And you can see it is cutting across various months. That is the performance of grid connected PV system. But you see, you would have also gone back here. You can go back. And then um, let me select a site. Okay. Then um, sorry. Sorry, has taken me to a different place. Yes, so um, we can uh, select a location. This is the last thing I'm illustrating on this tool. Let me go to Kenya. Select a location there. Then you go for, let's say maybe you go for off-grid system. You can again put your settings for the off-grid system. If you want to upload consumption data, let's say you had gone to a client, and you have collected consumption data and created a table that looks like the one we, we went through yesterday. You just upload. If you choose that, it will allow you to upload what? It will allow you to upload the data, okay? So once you upload the data, it will also influence, okay? It will also influence the kind of information you'll be able to access from what? From this system. Okay, so are we able? Are we able to use the PV GIS software? 
Are we able to use the PV GIS software or platform? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. And I hope you have appreciated the versatility of this software. Remember that um, engineers would find a lot of information from uh, this software. But now, you know, for us technicians, we would want to focus more on doing simple calculations here and there, and then we do the installation. So we may not want to bog ourselves or bog our minds so much with uh, detailed information. That's why I am very much keen on the depth that I am going to, okay? The bottom line is we wanted to check how much uh, solar power we can get from a particular site. But I will get to the practical stages of the design of solar PV modules. And therefore now even uh, a number of areas here which we are touching on, I don't want to focus on those details. Can we leave it there? Or we, want, uh, to, we want that I show the final uh, platform. Can we leave it there or I show the final platform? Let me get the feeling from last. I have a question from Stephen Kamau. How do how does one determine the, the the system loss? Okay, so Stephen, that is a very very good question. Um, the system loss is a combination of five main factors. Number one is on the conversion efficiency of the solar PV module. The best solar PV module will do a maximum of 25%. If you give it 100% of solar irradiation or solar power, it will transform a maximum of a quarter. The second one is the cable choices, the cable sizes, okay? So there will be losses on the DC cables, the ones we use in connecting or wiring the DC part, and there'll be losses on the AC cables. So there's a loss factor that is contributed by cables. There's another loss factor that is contributed by shading, like partial shading from dust particles, branches, obstacles, tall buildings, and so on and so forth. There's another one that is contributed to by, there's another one that is contributed to by, there's another one that is contributed to by, yes, there's another one that is contributed to by maybe dust particles, okay? Um, um, some issues to do with the efficiencies of charge controllers, batteries, inverters, and so on and so forth, okay? So it is a factor that the designer would arrive at after taking into account several aspects of the system. And I will give typical values in future, depending on whether you are dealing with a residential system maybe a commercial system, maybe of what capacity and so on and so forth. In future, just ask me to give you typical values and I would be able to give them to you maybe on a case by case basis. If you are doing a residential system, what is the kind of losses that uh, you can be applied and so on and so forth. So Stephen Kamau is also saying, uh, saying show the final one. So Lawan is saying, I think it is enough for today. Geoffrey Wakoli, the final one. John Muiri, the final one. Brian, the final one. Or Edward, the final one. So thank you, members. Let me show the final one. And thank you for being patient with me. I am showing the final one. And I have to stick precisely to that. And I will be very brief on this one. Of course, it is the final one. I have to be very brief. This is the final one. I have to be very brief. So now being the final one, number four and number five are interconnected in a way but different. Let me show number four. Very, very important. Let me show number four from National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL. Oh, this one is for the US Department of Energy. Okay. Majority of my research I have done I have been getting data from number four. And majority of the data are fed to artificial intelligence tools. And uh, some of the programming I've done for renewable energy systems, I've done a lot of uh, uh, software development and programming for 
intelligent energy managers in renewable energy have been accessing data from number four and combine it with the number one. So number one and number four have been very, very instrumental tools for me in uh, developing some intelligent uh, renewable energy solutions. So I am demonstrating that one the very last time. Um, let me share that screen. Test it there. There we are. I hope we have it. This one is very much easy to use. You can enter home address or business address. As you can see here, my 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 my, my, my case is telling me Kigali. Uh, the last time I was training this course, I had some participants from uh, Rwanda, so I was using the Rwanda site. That's where you see Kigali there. But let me type Kisi. Then I click go. This is the same thing we attempted to do with a particular platform. The very first platform, it did not work for us. So now you see this one. Okay. This one is able to load Kisi. And you're able to zoom. So like now this is Kisi now. Okay. Now, once you select the site, just click this arrow here. So you come and click this arrow. When you click that arrow, it will take you to system information. If you want to go back, you go back there. Some people navigate here. They click system information up here, and then they click results up there. Okay? Okay, and you, you can go back to where you select the site when you click the resource data. Remember what I'm doing now is practice. This is not theory. This is practice. So let me click go to system information. So for the DC system size, maybe let me put um, let me put 400 kilowatts. The module type, let me put standard. Array type fixed. The system losses, let me use 14%. The tilt angle, let me put 20 degrees. The azimuth degrees, let me put zero. For the advanced parameters, let me use the default values, the DC to AC size ratio, let me leave it at 1.2. I will unpack these, these parameters in future when we'll be looking at case studies. Inverter efficiency, and that, let me put it at 96%. Inverters are very efficient. They, they do efficiencies of between 95 and 98%. Ground coverage ratio, let me put 0 0.4. The albedo, now you know what albedo is. Maybe let me just leave it from weather file. By facial, let me put no. Um, maybe the monthly radiance losses, let me put zero for those. Okay. And then I can hide the advanced parameters. Okay. So once you put your system information here, you can click go to PV, what's results, or you click results up here. The language you can also put English, Espanol, or the other language there, which I don't know what, what it is. So click go. Now there you have your results. Like now here, 579,957,000 kilowatt hours per year. Then you can click here, print your results, and you get the PDF version of the results. When you click print your results, you'll be able to get the P PDF version of what? PDF version of the, of the results. And they will be looking nice. They will be looking nice to be able to get the PDF version of the resource, which you can save. Okay. So like now here, this is annual. Okay. But you can also do monthly or hourly. If you want monthly, click monthly. If you want hourly, click hourly. Okay. The location and station identification, this is KC. Uh, the latitude and longitude given there. The PV system information specifications given there. The performance metrics, the DC capacity factor at 16.6%. I will explain those terminologies or those parameters in future when we'll be designing uh, systems. Let me leave it at that point, take questions, and then we we'll stop and thank you for being patient with me. Let me take questions.
Now, let us type our names on the chat area there for purposes of uh, keeping the attendance or records. Please let us type our names and details on the chat area there. And now as you do that, I can also take questions. As you do that, I can also take questions. I have given you unmuting rights. You can take questions. I can take questions. Yes, we also note our presence on the chat area there. Let me have questions kindly. Let me have questions. As, as maybe we exit, as we prepare to wind up, the, the ability of the designer to know how much solar potential we have at a site or the generation capacity of a site per day, per month, per year, is very much important. Just the same way, there's a difference maybe, maybe trying to fish from the waters which are not having plenty of fish vis-a-vis -vis maybe fishing from the waters where already there's plenty of fish. The catch would be more where the population of fish is sufficient and the catch would be less where the population of fish is uh, less. So the more the population of fish, the better the catch. The more, or the, the more we have solar resource in abundance, the better the performance of the system because what just one module of 330 watts peak can collect for you is enormous. Within maybe one, two hours, you've already filled up the batteries. Within one to one and a half hours, the batteries are full. But there is a site you charge forever, a whole day, even two, three days of adequate sunshine. The batteries are not yet full. So now please share today's slides. That is from Cecilia Wausi. Noted Cecilia had shared yesterday, but I'm going to share one more time. Which system is usually used in Kenya? Elijah Kibet is asking, which system is usually used in Kenya? Um, Elijah, I guess maybe you're asking maybe the system with respect to the, to the sites. Now, um, there are um, financials like um, the World Bank, African Development Bank, okay, um, Government of Kenya and so on and so forth. Usually when you are, uh, preparing the, the feasibility, the technical feasibility report of a particular project like the Garissa Solar Power Plant, they would require detailed information. And uh, where you see that the software is supported or the platform is supported by World Bank, European Union, NREL, they will have a soft spot for that. Okay, so my my answer to that would be that we use a combination of the tools, at least two, and fair enough, three. You would be at a very awkward position if you are bidding for a particular project that maybe is UN funded or is funded by those agencies I've mentioned about, and then another company has come with a very detailed report, and you find that they are using a mixture of these tools, their technical visibility report will pass the test and the US can fail because you only relied on one, on one tool and there are some things now they are not able to see. So I emphasize on number one, okay. Number four, if I can just go back to that list, I emphasize on number one, please don't miss it out. Number four, and number three, don't miss those ones out. Thank you, that's a very good question. 
Let me see if there's any other question. Let me see. How accurate is the program? Okay, um, their accuracies are different because um, there are some which uh, resolve a site up to plus or minus uh, 10, five to 10 meters, but others resolve um, up to plus or minus 30 meters. The most accurate one is the last, the most accurate one is the second last one I demonstrated. The one I put at number one is the most accurate one, the PVGIS, followed by the one at number four, then number three, then number two, and so on and so forth. I will not comment on number seven because for those softwares, it depends on uh, whether you're using a trial version or the commercial version and so on and so forth. The performance capabilities are different depending on the package you've gone for. That's a very good question. It's a very good question. Okay, okay, so I think I've responded to the questions and you have uh, um, registered your presence on the chat area. Unless if there is any more questions, can we stop there and thank you. Bye bye for now, we are done with the meetings for this week. Our meetings would now resume next week and I will communicate. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen Kamau. Thank you very much. So once you've recorded or registered your presence, you're free to log off the meeting. Thank you, Kip Kirui. Thank you, Mwale. Uh -huh, KPR. Okay, the staff number that I would really wish to know who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Emily, thank you. Abanas, thank you. Elijah, thank you. Thank you. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Mwambingu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm humbled. Thank you. Thank you, Geoffrey. Thank you, Moses Odiambo. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pius. Thank you, Fano. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Wamboa. Thank you, Wamboa. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wamboa. Thank you. Okay, bye, everyone. Until next time, have a fruitful evening.